Welcome to the Everything Action Cast, the official podcast of EverythingAction.com. Hello and welcome to the Everything Action Cast, the podcast week of September 25th, 2023. I'm your host, Zach. And I'm your co-host, Chris. And uh, we got Tesla's time this week. The uh, writer strike is finally over, so we'll dig into some of the stuff that they, the Raiders Guild got from that deal. Uh, we got some DC Universe news. But first up, we got a ton of trailers. Um, I don't wonder if people were just like, Where's, the writer's strike is over, get the trailers out there. <laughs> like, we're back in business. Like, um, But we got the first trailer uh, this week for Argyle, which has been kind of a mysterious Matthew Vaughn project. I think we, the only thing we got before this trailer was a photo of like Henry Cavill with a insane haircut and Dua Lipa. And they were like in like, you know, like a club or something together. And the trailer is, I think even crazier than like anyone thought it was going to be. Cause it's basically like, I mean, it's sort of romancing the stone, but it's also like, I, th- I saw a lot of people were coming to like, it looks like it could be like a, like strangers in a fiction, like that Will Ferrell movie. Cause basically Henry Cavill and, uh, like John Cena and Dua Lipa and uh, Ariana DeBose are all in all all their like spy action stuff they're doing is like a fictional literary universe that is being written by Bryce Dallas Howard, who's Ellie Conway. She's like this author who writes these like espionage books, like this Argyle book series. But then she gets like drawn into like actual like espionage. Like Sam Rockwell is like a secret agent and then like finds her and like is like protecting her and they're like dra- dragging her along this whatever this adventure is. And then like Brian Cranston's like some seems like he's some sort of a villain that is like there's like a some sort of like secret or the books are doing telling them something or doing like that she doesn't realize or <laughs> It's, it's, like, it's something... I, I think, I, yeah, I think like someone is actually like piecing together plans that would have worked in her stories. Yeah. And it's she, like the most logical thing that like the story could tell is exactly what the bad guys would have done. So like, you know, like it, yeah. it's sort of like it, it's like the Simpsons, how they can kind of predict like the future by just being the most like funny what ifs. And it's like it makes the most sense if it could happen. So, yeah, I think it's, like, because she's such a good author, and it's, like, oh, shit, there's, she's sort of, like, like figured actual, out a formula. There's, like, an actual, like, cabal, evil cabal. It's, like, trying to, like, yeah. like, oh, we're going to use we're using these books as, like, the blueprints for, like, our our evil scheme. But we have to make sure she finishes this new one, because that's, like, the one we're using for this, this plot. Yeah, but, like, that's always your damn downfall is interfering with it. Like, you know, like, it definitely is, like, a movie trope, but it's, like, if you, if the person who gives you all this, like, kind of blueprinting or is super close to your actual plan don't mess with them because their plan isn't to actually stop you if they're unaware of you you know Mm -hmm. but this movie is sort of like a a baiting switch because you think it's gonna be a henry cavill john cena and dua lipa yeah, it, it, it seemed like it was just going to be a straightforward, like, oh, like, Henry Cavill's in a Kingsman movie. That's what, that's what they were kind of like, we thought it was going to be. And oh, then yeah. they're like, oh, no, it's like this, it's got this weird meta level where, like, that that is, that's like a fake literary universe. <laughs> that, like, this, that's like, what's happening in this, like, book that is being written. Like, I want to see what's in this Kingsman modern day, or, you know, just the Kingsman story. And... It's like, nah, psych. Matt, it's like Matt Yvonne kind of parroting his own movies. But there's, but there's, yeah, but there's still like Kingsman style action. Like there's like that set piece on like the train where like Sam Rockwell is like, which I mean, I mean Sam Rockwell doing Kingsman stuff see is cool. Like you don't really see him doing a lot of like crazy actions. It's kind of like Colin Firth and Kingsman where it's just like, oh, he's doing action. All right. Well, did you ever see uh like Mister Mister something like? <sighs> It's a mo- very underrated movie. It's the one where he's like a hitman. Oh, Mr. Right? Mr. Right, yeah. Have you seen Mr. Right? No, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. I recommend it, because he does a really good job of being like, Sam Rockwell is just a hitman. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have the same flow, but he dances. Like, he doesn't have the Matthew Vaughn style fast-paced combat, but he has his own like moves that are very like Sam Rockwell. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm all for that. Like, Sam Rockwell is a very underrated action star. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be, I think, I think when they first announced the movie, they're like, oh, it's based on a book that hasn't come out yet. And now I think the reveal is, oh, it's, there's there's gonna be like a, they're going to put out the actual like book, quote unquote, along with the movie, like the Argyle book that's from the movie is going to be like available to like buy. It's going to get very meta. Yeah. And, and I think also, uh, some of the stuff that came out before is that, um, uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be like a, you know, like a James Bond theme, but like Dua Lipa is going to do like some sort of like title track or something for the movie. I'm for that. It makes sense. I mean, right now we don't even have a Bond thing, so like this will do. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Argyle is going to be February 2nd next year. And it's also an Apple TV Plus um, co-produced or Apple, I mean, Apple Original Films co-produced, so it will be on Apple TV Plus sometime post-theatrical, so maybe a couple, a couple months or however long after it's in theaters, it'll be on Apple TV Plus. So yeah, so that's coming soon. Uh, hopefully we'll, maybe we'll get some, another trailer or something before that comes out. And then we also got uh, the first trailer for the new Netflix series, Obliterated, which is coming from the uh, Cobra Kai team, uh, all the like the, the the same writers and producers in that show, and it, this literally is basically like it's like the Hangover mixed with action movies. Because uh, basically the premise is that there's a special forces team that's kind of like all these like, all these different agents from different like uh, groups. There's like a Navy SEAL and a CIA agent and an army explosives expert and like, you know, like a Marine sniper, and they're all kind of they're all brought together for this mission in Las Vegas because there's a nuclear bomb that's going to go off. And they they stop the bomb, and then so they're like, "Oh, we're in Vegas for a party." But then they find out, "Oh no, that was a fake bomb. You have to, you have to, the, the real bomb's still out there." But now you're all hungover and on cocaine, and do, God knows what else because it's Las Vegas, and now you have to figure out that this is like special force has to like deal with this like nuclear bomb and terrorists, but they're like all just like <laughs> super fucked up. I'm for the concept, like. If this yeah, was a skit on SNL, it would have been funny. But the, or like it's like it's it sort of reminds me of like Reno nine one one, and you don't see movies like this that aren't typical. It's usually some sort of like comedy ensemble. Like the guys who did Workaholics did that like Die Hard movie on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I get the vibe from this. Like they basically took the same concept and said like, what if it's like we had good competent people, but then somehow had to water them down. So it, it's funny. It, I feel like this could have been like, like this feels like a uh, a video game level where like your character gets hammered and it's like suddenly everything's distorted and you're like, oh shit. Like it, it's it's Rainbow Six Vegas. It's like Rainbow Six Vegas, but like, your characters are, are are like drunk because they they spent too much time at like a strip club or something. Or yeah, and you're like, well, I mean, they have downtime. You need to like blow off steam, and then it's like, oh shit, like you're still on the clock. Yeah. Like, this makes more sense for normal people, right? Like, it's not like everyone is the perfect soldier 24-7. Mm -hmm. So I like the concept. And it's going to be an eight-episode first season. It's going to So, yeah, it's, it's actually a show, not a movie. Um, right. It's going to be November 30th is when it, it's going to debut. And, yeah, it, it, yeah it, looks, it, looks, it looks pretty fun. It's a f super fun concept. Hopefully it's a, a funny... <laughs> Hopefully, funny show. Hopefully, it can sustain itself for eight episodes because that seems. I mean, if this is a movie, like I, I, it seems like yeah, a very that's focused like, movie sounds yeah. better. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they can like make you know carry this through like eight episodes. I mean, I trust well, I the, bet the first guys. Episode so. isn't them being hammered. Like I feel like it's gonna like really build it up. I bet. I bet they're gonna. It's gonna be this really big kind of like normal action movie for the first episode. Like we. we you see at the beginning of the, uh, the beginning of the trailer where they like they stop the act like they, they think it's the nuclear bomb. So there's probably gonna be, like a big like kind of like they'll be like most of the episode and then it's like end of the first episode is like oh no we're partying but now that we got that phone call from the terrorists that there's <laughs> the actual bomb still. Do you and think you know what this would be funny like in a better format it's a ripoff they do it but it'd be funnier is that it's like 24 but yeah. every episode is one hour in that whole eight hour binge mm. where like the first hour is them doing it then like the next hour is like hey what do you want to do after this 
then like the next episode's like them getting dinner and saying like, hey, who's up for a strip club? And then it's like it escalates. Yeah. That'd be fun if like yeah, half if half the show was the the build up to them and then like the last half like last four episodes are oh shit, we're fucked up, we have to stop this now. Yeah. yeah. Who can drive? Oh shit, we can't drive. Like, I'll hey, be fine. Like we're we're superheroes basically. <laughs> Well, see, the, see, like, the, there's like the one guy on the team who doesn't do, like, he's not drinking or doing anything. He's just like, I'm like the only, I'm the only one who's not fucked up right now. Damn it! <laughs> like, I told you guys <laughs> he that just, Invertly, he's like not the smartest guy in the group. Like, he's not the tech nerd, but somehow because he's the most sober, he becomes the, like the smartest person in the group. Yep. See, that sounds funny. That's a good like, uh, kind of like a focus thing where like you get these established characters and now like they get fucking ruined by uh just being blitz out of their mind and it's just them trying to struggle with like their problems mm-hmm. but it'd be even hilarious if somehow one one character happens to be like a drunken master just like <laughs> oh like i'm actually better at this when i'm drunk and he's legit is yeah it doesn't just say it because you say it mm-hmm but I'm down for it. Um, what what network is this again? Netflix. It's it's a Netflix show. Oh, thank God. And uh, speaking of Netflix, they also had um, one of their fan events. So they've had like to dumb, which is their their fan their fan event where they do like a bunch of trailers and announcements. But they had Drop O One, which was an animation fan event. So they dropped a bunch of trailers and like clips and first looks about at, for a bunch of upcoming animated series. So yeah, tons ton of stuff real for that. Um, there's gonna be a show called Blue Eye Samurai. That looks pretty cool. It's like a samurai revenge kind of like, looks like super violent, um, really cool animation style. Which is gonna be out, uh, I think next next month or like later this year. And then we also got is a very 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 short um, uh, clip, but we got like the first look at Devil May Cry, which is the next uh, basically like a cousin show to Castlevania. It's it's basically the same team that is doing Castlevania right now, like Adi Shankar and and like the animation studio, but obviously based on Devil May Cry. So we got like a quick clip, clip, quick clip of uh, Dante, just like you know doing some Dante stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know what? A lot of some people have not seen the other Devil May Cry anime. And it shows. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, this one this one definitely seems like it's going to be in that Castlevania vein. So if you if you like the Castlevania like tone and action style and the animation style, it's probably going to be pretty much exactly like that. Just Devil mm-hmm. May Cry. Well, the Devil May Cry on the orig- other one had different, slightly different like animation style. Um, it's actually slower at some points, but I, I think it did tie into the series. I don't remember. They introduced, like, a new character who, like, you forget later on. Like, it's just, like, this little girl. But this just seems like, hey, come watch Dante. You know, like, that's why you're watching the show. The other one was, like, come watch Dante in a pre-Mandalorian-esque thing where he played, like, a guardian to this little girl. Mm-hmm. And people weren't about that yet. But I'm all for more Devil May Cry stuff, especially in this version. Yeah, like and this that's, style. That, yeah, and that that's coming soon, so we don't really know. That doesn't release date yet. Um, I just Blue Eye Samurai is coming out November third. Um, and we also got a full trailer for speaking of uh, Adi Shankar, um, Captain Laserhawk, a Blood Dragon remix, which is like, I mean, every time every every time they reveal a new trailer or something, it just gets more and more insane. Where it's it's this whole like Ubisoft universe where it's like characters from like every kind of Ubisoft thing are like remixed and re like re like placed into the this like new like cyberpunk style universe like uh Rayman is like the news anchor <laughs> like for like this universe interesting and there's like there's an Assassin's Creed frog and it looks like maybe possibly some sort of like like horrible horrible looking kaiju sized like rabbits from another dimension show up um but also it also seems like it's gonna be it's like a basically like the suicide squad where captain like dolph laserhawk who is captain laserhawk joint is, is gets thrown in prison and there's like a bunch of other like inmates with him 
and they're all kind of like Suicide Squad into like this mission where they have like bombs in their heads. They have to like figure complete this mission, or, and then they might get like their freedom from like jail. And it's like you have to go like go steal something or t- do something to, like this like big like corp- like cyber corporation. But yeah, it, I mean, it, it looks it looks absolutely bonkers. Like it's just like all like there's like just like there's people, but there's also like animal people. And then yeah, like Rayman's the is the anchor man, and then there's a there's a frog, <laughs> there's an Assassin's Creed assassin, and uh, yeah, it seems, it seems like it seems like a lot of other like uh like nods to Ubisoft stuff. Yeah, it's pretty much their I think, universal. I think, I think one, world that they're all for, like can all inhabit. Yeah, I think one of the other guys on the team is maybe like a Beyond Good and Evil character or something, or supposed to be like a good, Beyond Good and Evil character. Like, it's like a not not definitely not a human, but like a like a giant like I don't know, not like a, like a warthog looking or like yeah, of, that's yeah. that's a Beyond Good and Evil character. Yeah, so that's so that's another like nod to like another Ubisoft thing. But that's gonna be out uh, October nineteenth. That's gonna be a new, a new series. Um, hopefully, hopefully there's at least some sort of not like nod to like actual like Blood Dragon. Like if like Michael Bean has a cameo or something. I'm surprised he didn't come back for doing the voice work or something. I'm sure he would. <laughs> He's up for it. I bet. Yeah. Or like his kids that they introduced in uh, Trial Trials of the Blood Dragon. I didn't play that. I know I had kids in that one. Yeah, because because that that one was set in like, or it's it's whatever the equivalent of like the nineties. Because like you know obviously Blood Dragon is like an homage to like the eighties, and then like Trials of the Blood Dragon was like kind of like a nineties homage, but it was like whatever the future year it was um, in the Blood Dragon universe. And but 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 it was it was a trials like uh you know like motor motocross puzzle kind of you know precision platformer kind of thing. So, so totally different game, but like the tone was the same. You you like you said you just had to like you know like or like get used get used to uh, the trials gameplay style. Yeah, it's it's not easy to be no. good at trials. But it had, I mean the, yeah, the soundtrack was killer. I mean there was like uh. Power Glove did another like incredible like soundtrack for that game, and there was like really fun cutscenes if you if you got through like the levels. So not not as not as good as like the actual like you know the original Blood Dragon Far Cry game, but still pretty fun. Uh, there's also a first look at the Tomb Raider anime series that's coming, Tomb Raider: The Legend of Lara Croft, which is def- definitely in the Square Enix universe. Uh, there's like a there's like a picture of like the cast from like the like the reboot series, like all of like Laura's Laura's friends from the that game. And I think this is, I think this might be set before that game, like the first like the first game in that trilogy, because it's, it's like the description was like it's the rise of Lara Croft. Yeah, I'm surprised they're able to use that model because like Square Enix doesn't own that right anymore. So I think. Like someone else does, does not like another group does? Yeah, I mean, yeah, whoever. Well, didn't they get they got bought by? Was it like Embracer Group, like who's like buying everyone? Maybe. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So it's like, why use the old design? Unless that was already in the works, and it's just like, oh well, one season and you're done. Mm-hmm. But yeah, not not much. You just, you just got to see like uh like Lara like fire like a, a bow and arrow, and then a couple of clips of some other stuff. But um, seems like it's gonna be probably like in the, like similar to like Castlevania, maybe. Um, I don't know if it's gonna have like the same tone, but like you know like the cursing kind of like over the top tone of Castlevania. But we'll see. There, there's not there's not any dialogue or anything. I don't think in the Tomb Raider trailer. And um, there was also a clip from Scott Pilgrim, which looks fun. Like it's basically like a reenactment of like uh, where Scott like orders something and has to, to, so that Ramona will show up at his house. But now now Ramona works for Netflix. Like she delivers DVDs for Netflix, not not Amazon. Right. 
so, so that's like a fun twist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which, but it, which, but it's also kind of like ironic because like literally, if you're hearing this today, or like when it, when this is going up, like DVD Netflix is dead. They ended it today. <laughs> And you didn't win the ten disc giveaway. I I didn't. No, I got my last. I got one one last disc. I didn't get ten discs. And uh, there's also a uh, Masters of the Universe Revolution, which is the sequel show to the Kevin the first Kevin Smith seri- series. They're they're doing a a second show, and it was basically like, it's He Man is dead fighting Scareglow. Okay. Which I think didn't didn't you watch some of that or all of that, Chris? Like the the first season of that, like Master the Universe, like Revelation. No, I gave up. Like I read the comic, I read the prequel mm-hmm. comic, and then I skimmed through like a recap of what that show's about. Uh, and then it was just like very. I'm trying to say it lightly because it's not bad. It just wasn't the show I was thinking it would be. The animation looks good, you know? The yeah. story mm-hmm. starts kind of strong, because they could just reintroduce something. But they really focus on the fact that, like, Prince Adam didn't tell people he was He-Man. And they really beat you over the head of that, like, it hurts a lot of people to the point where when he comes back from the dead, they're still mad at him. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what? I don't know, they, they try to add weight. They, instead of, like, being kind of grounded in a very emotional He-Man story that it normally wasn't in the original, like, talking about the original comics and then, like, other versions, kind of got more storytelling and, and kind of more fleshed out drama. But this went hard in the drama for no reason. And especially when you read the comic, you're like, oh, cool. Like, it explains that the the sore he carries is, like, you know the lineage of the people who can wield it and be responsible. It's not just like, you know, one family or, or like one specific group. It's just like, if you're worthy, it's like a Thor's hammer kind of thing. And it just sort of spirals out of control. I'm like, mm. what is going on? Just like you're, you're doing too much for, um, to like, if you're an old He-Man fan that hasn't really watched a lot, but we're familiar with the old show. It you was, might be okay with it, but it gets very different. And it was trying to be a, like a direct sequel to like the original show. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh god, like it makes it seem like He Man's been doing this for like I don't know eight years or so like something where it's not his year one, you know? And then something where when you find out that like He Man was Prince Adam, um like his girlfriend just sort of freaks out and then his parents are like, Oh wow. That's different. You know, like there it's so, it's so like passive just to get to the next part. And then it time skips to the like three, five years later, something, something I haven't like remembered, but it time skips. And then it's like Tara, I think the, his girlfriend or like it was his sort of girlfriend. It, you, you follow her, which is fine. like, Teal, that's it. And like I said, like it's it's fine to have that, but they just totally negate like his sister being Shira. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? Like it's not like oh okay, you just could have made this a Shira show, but the Shira show is like really good. The one that's also on Netflix, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Like that's just give us that. Somehow, like people keep forgetting Shira is still like a character. You know, like that. If you're going to tell it a story that makes more sense and have a new focus, sure is your girl. And they went <laughs> for like more of a silly story, which is fine. But then they try to make uh, Tara into He-Man. But then she sort of rejects like trying to be the main hero, which is like, all right, well, then I'm going to give it to Shira. <laughs> like, that was my thing <laughs> yeah. watching it. I was like, all right. And it's like there's there's a lot of other characters like there's other heroes in the show that like could take up like. You know, the sword wasn't what made He-Man He-Man. It just kind of boosted his power. Like, anyone could just be like, well, I'm going to train or I'm going to just invent a gun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah that's, that's my break. Like, I, again, I don't mind that there's more. I didn't mind that there's, like, a, an expanded universe in that area. Like, I'm not someone who's, like, totally against it. But I was, I gave it a shot. And I was like, yeah, it's not for me. Then that's 
you know, like that's most of my recommendations. Like it wasn't for me. Maybe I will not gonna deter people, but mm. it wasn't like Resident like Resident Evil the TV show. Oh, that gosh. was I was telling people not to watch that. And thankfully, no one did because they got canceled. So you can watch it just for uh, Lance Reddick parts, but otherwise, the whole thing was dog shit. But yeah, rev- so he meant, uh, yeah, Master's Universe Revolution. Uh, I think it's sometime next year. Like, uh, there's no really say for that one either. But yeah, Drop a One. Like, t- lots lots of uh, cool looking animated stuff coming to Netflix. Uh, in the near future, so if you're an animation fan, <laughs> get all that, get, add all that to your uh, your watch list. <laughs> so we also, also the, the, the biggest news this week is probably that the uh, the writer strike is officially over. Uh, they came to a deal with the producers, uh, the WGA and the AM, AMPTP, and it's a uh, it was a 94 page agreement. The, the, like full of like legalese um but like basically basically the key points are um that the studios can't use ai to write scripts um and you can't they can't like they can't use like generate something with ai and say like oh this is like a original material or a li- like a literary material um and if if they generate something with ai um the writer like if they give it to a writer to like rewrite it, then the, that writer is like the actually is credited as like the the writer of it. They're basically, they're basically like the studios are acknowledging like AI c- cannot be uh like acknowledged as a writer. Yeah, you can use it as a tool, but it still yeah. has a human behind it. Yeah, it's the, still the, data. AI, AI is still data that you need to feed it in order to keep like a database. It's sort yeah. of which that, that was the other that was the other big thing is that, is that the studios can't feed WGA writers materials into AI to train it, but they can feed us, then we can do it. <laughs> yeah, like non SAG writers, like there are loopholes yeah. in the language that I could see where basically they could hire someone who would be a scab to literally put it all together, like tell them, but not cite his source. And then they would just pay him, and it would just be like John Smith. Like, oh yeah. man, well, he's creating all these new scripts, John Smith. Yeah, well, it's 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 not like a full, like the studios studios can, could use they can use AI to generate material, but they have to disclose that it was AI generated, and they can't force writers to use AI, but the writers can use AI if they want. That seems weird. I feel like that's a two-way, sh- an ugly two-way. Like it shouldn't be a two-way street. And there's gonna, and there's, there's still a little bit murkiness of like, um, the training. Like it's at some, there's kind of like this like opening for if sometimes something down the line, if the writers wanted to like argue or sue the studios, um, uh, like if the guild wanted to sue them about like what they're using to train AI, then that that's like kind of a future issue. Wow, they should do that. Really get sort of that. Uh, some safeguards. They basically, it's basically well, I think the writing was like they reserved the right to um, argue or do like uh, prohibit like so, something later, late, at a later date or something. Well, yeah, I, I kind of remember that was like an argument where they want at least some time so they can have a better argument. Mm-hmm. So that way they can protect themselves, which is yeah, fine. So, but fundamentally, someone should just be trying out the possibilities with AI and then turning around saying, OK, we need to make sure we can't do this and this or else we're just out of a they found like a giant gate that they're just going to like rush through. You know, what I mean, like they're going to. They're going to figure out how to get around this rule. They're not you know what I mean like. The studios aren't gonna forget this fight. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's I mean it's it's still it's it's still early. Like this is like the first like ever like kind of like big like contract agreement that has like AI language in it. So I mean, and then we're, like I'm sure like in the near future there's gonna be like you know like government government like there's gonna be like laws or regulations on AI. So, 
but we're still it's still like really early as far as like you know what AI could do and what what we can use it for and what we can legally use it for and I mean I think I, like George R. R. Martin and like John Grisham and other authors are like, are like suing OpenAI right now because they're like for copy infringement because I, I think it's like you could you could pull like you could input like it's either like outputting stuff that they've written as like you know like prompts or like if you can like prompt it like like generate like like oh like write me a new game of thrones book or something you know like you know, like figure use out the it, pattern and then, like it'll like use all of his like all the previous books to like write something yeah there's enough material on those writers especially a yeah. john grissom novel i mm-hmm. bet you you can just make one up right now yeah even um, if it's not like the saying john grisham is your face it's enough of his work that influences. Yeah, it's like uh, you could you could just say like, "Hey, write me a write me a book that's like John Grisham." You know what? Or, Jack, or in, the, in, the, in the style of John uh, Grisham. Uh, yeah. Let's also let's be the new Shakespeare. Let's just <laughs> enough Shakespeare's happen. We write can me, quit us, this write, podcast and just me, be Shakespeare writers. Write, write me a play in the in the style of Shakespeare. <laughs> Correct. You know, I, I, you want to talk about non copyright? I don't think we need to pay anyone to call ourselves a shakespeare right well just use you just use something that's like public domain like write me write me a uh a way the Pooh play that's in the, in the uh Ooh, that's good in the style of shakespeare well no i would just make new episodes of way of the Pooh, the tv mm-hmm. show well you can't you can't do you can't do dis you can't do disney way of the Pooh. right you, but you, it you, could it, be it's, it's, it's based on like the actual book characters the yeah it, that's fine no no shirt sure. Mm-hmm. No shirt, Winnie the Pooh, yep. where you just completely naked. Yep. <laughs> so, um, the Writers Guild also got um, better streaming residuals. So they 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 uh, came to, like they're gonna get more uh, uh, bonuses and residuals for popular streaming shows, and they're going to get a. It's not gonna be public, but like the Writers Guild is gonna get um, actual data from the streamers about. Like here's like, it's the so if it's like a movie, it's like h- however long the movie is divided by the number of hours watched, and that's like how we are we determining like the popularity. It's also um, if 20% of the domestic subscribers watch something like watch something in the first 90 days, then you're gonna you'll get your like your bonus payment. So like like so like if. Well, it's 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 gonna be like after like like January first of next year, but well, like if if a new like Netflix movie came out and twenty percent of the Netflix subscribers watched it in the first ninety days, then whoever wrote that movie would get like bonus residuals on it. Wow. And and then the and the and the, and the guild the guild members will know exactly what what how their projects are doing because they're gonna get like these like reports from the studios and the streamers. About like here, here's all the content you wrote. Here's here's all the content. Here's like the data that, that of like how many people actually watched it. But that that won't that won't we're not gonna see that publicly. Except for Netflix is the only one that is like still like publicly putting out streaming numbers. We probably get, like the public public publicly will will also still just get like the like you know top five. This is the top ten most popular things on HBO Max or whatever on, on Max or Prime Video or something this week. And then also like the Nielsen ratings are like the like the, the like the best data or like we'll we'll probably get if you want like if you want like see how popular things are but they're, but they're like delayed by a month. But yeah, ho- hopefully hopefully maybe someday we'll like they'll like actually put out like every, everyone will be like Netflix just put out like actual like here's like literally like how many hours of, of, of like of like suits was, got watched last week or whatever. More suits. Yeah. Um. They also they also they also got increased pay for like their minimum rates. Um, which is like you know like the minimum like payment they can get for like a project. Um, minimum staffing because they, they they wanted like to change like how the staffing was for TV shows and, and writers rooms and they they got pretty much what, exactly what they wanted for that. So yeah, the, I mean the the writers guild got pretty like almost everything they like either like it was like exactly what they wanted like like just barely not what they like it was like oh we wanted a five percent raise and you, we're, we're gonna get a four percent raise so so like 
pretty much pretty much across the board they got that was like a pretty big win for like the writers guild they got like a, a, a ton of stuff they wanted and uh and uh i think it's it, it's gotta get voted on by the like, every member but it's like there's like barely there's like literally almost like a zero chance that it's gonna like not go through i thought the strike was done yeah the strike is done but they, like it's just like there's like this the the leadership voted on it and, and ratified the the deal, but now like every single Writers Guild member has to vote and say like yes I I approve this deal, and it's I mean there's 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 like a possibility that like like a majority of the like like of, the, of them can say like no we reject this, but like it's it's a it's a extremely good deal so like there's like barely there's like zero chance it's gonna get, like, not get approved, and once then once all the every every writer approves it then it's like officially it's approved. That's the deal now for the next three years or whatever. And, but, but in the meantime, like during like the voting process, like everyone can go back to work. They all, everyone can go back to work. If you're on a project, you can go back to work on that project. I think all the, all, all the light night shows are probably going to be back. Like sometime, like maybe like mid, middle of next week or like in end of next week or within very, very, very soon. Like all the, you know, like talk shows and all the, all that stuff uh, are going to be back. And then, I think Saturday Night Live is gonna be back soon, but not, but like with like uh, non SAG actor like uh, host because SAG is still on strike. But I I think they're gonna they're talking to like the studios next week I think, and that hopefully that strike gets like resolved, possibly next week, if they can get like a deal similar to like the writers got, and then uh, this, this whole this whole craziness will be over for another three years. Yeah, until it comes back and it's like oh this again. At least the 2007 one made sense, where they didn't have like AI issues yet. Yeah, and uh, streaming was streaming was just was just kind of like right. It was, that was like a very yeah. big streaming, so like they didn't, they didn't really, figure like, that out. Yeah, but that's a new business type that wasn't stealing creativity. I feel like the streaming thing wasn't a problem at that time, just because no one knew. Yeah, it's like YouTube barely was a thing. There was there was there was like this there was like a it was like new media is what they're called you know there, there's like the whole thing of like oh YouTube that's new media <laughs> and it, yeah so yeah but that there, there hasn't been like yeah this you know this resid- residuals deal and this bonus and stuff and like the that streaming the streaming numbers that right like because like yeah because before before this deal like you know the writers. Writers, writers and actors and whoever else was like on the sh- like the shows, they they had no idea. Like Netflix, Netflix, Netflix could be like, oh, it's it's one of our most popular shows, but it's like how many actual people actually watched it? Who like we won't tell you. It was popular between these hours, between like three in the morning and five in the morning. Or or if a show got canceled, it's like, well, how many people were watching it? Not enough. <laughs> we won't, we won't tell you what our our threshold is, but. Not enough. We're not legally tell you that you're doing good or bad. Yeah. What a weird business profession of a studio saying your show's not good enough, and it's usually like what their site is just like, I don't know, just low ratings, and then it's like, well, what's our ratings? Like you can't find out. Well, I mean, th- yeah, yeah, because because you know, the classic TV model is we had the Nielsen ratings. Which I mean, we have Nielsen raising now for streaming, but there, yeah, there's like a delay. There's kind of like it doesn't track mobile devices. It's only like uh, certain like t- like TV based apps and stuff. Um, but I mean, yeah, the, the old TV model was oh yeah, your sh- we have the Nielsen ratings. Your show sh- your show has bad ratings. You're canceled. <laughs> like that was then, but they knew exactly how like how many, like what the ratings were for their show. Which yeah, they haven't had for all these streaming platforms but now they now they will along with all the other stuff they got so yeah good 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 on the, the writers guild for you know get, getting pretty much everything they wanted out of this like super long strike so um other news uh james gunn uh confirmed that uh he was, he was talking about like the DC universe, and he confirmed that three characters from the uh, legacy uh, DC universe are going to be back um, with the actors playing them currently. So uh, 
Zola Maraduena is going to be back as Blue Beetle in some capacity in the new universe, and Viola Davis is going to be Amanda Waller, and John Cena is going to be Peacemaker. So just Peacemaker, basically, if he cameos with Blue Beetle. Just yeah, so Blue Beetle somehow like, it, not sure if it's going to be a continuation of the current movie that's you know just came out like, like a month you know last month, or if it's going to if it's going to be like a reboot, but it's still the same the actor. Um, and there's going to be like the wall, the Waller TV show. That's going to be like the Amanda Waller show with VL Davis is part of the new DC universe, but it's also like a continuation of peacemaker and suicide squad and all that stuff. And then there's going to be there's at some point, there's going to be a second season of peacemaker, which obviously will have John Cena in it. And it's it's going to pick up from like the first season, which is in the old universe, but now it's the uni- new universe. So still, still uh a little bit complicated and confusing right now but <laughs> it's it seems like if if james gunn worked on it it's 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 in the universe because it's his universe now and, but but also he's a he's a big blue beetle fan apparently or something <laughs> so the blue beetle's coming over that's cool that it's it's garnished enough of that one actor's role. Like at least John Cena was in two things to get him to stay, you know? Yeah. And then Viola Davis a is very, stuff. yeah, a bunch of stuff, but very underrated. Like she's not really used a lot. She's like mentioned. She hands papers in, and uh, blue and Suicide Squad and sort of is in uh, Black Adam. I didn't see Black Adam, but I just know she's, she's there. She's, she's in the uh, post credit scene. But otherwise, don't know. You know, I don't know what's going on with the rest of the DCU that... Um, I mean, sucks that we'll never get the, the, the Henry Cavill, like, proper Superman sequel. We'll never get the... Uh, <laughs> A movie where Aquaman can actually be fun in that isn't just like a cameo. Because his cameo in The Flash is just random. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel <laughs> like like it felt like a rush decision there. They're like, I have no money. Yeah. What can we get Jason Momoa to do? You want to be face down <laughs> in a puddle? All right. <laughs> Otherwise, um. It's cool to see John Cena stay. I feel like mm-hmm. he can still grow into more Peacemaker stuff. Yeah. The Blue Peacemaker, Beetle, I gotta get. I gotta give more of a shout of. That, I think that's like, coming. That should be on H, like. It, that should be on Max within another like month or two. I would imagine. The more important question is George Lopez still the DC. Like, <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Canon. Yeah. I saw. I remember. I saw that trailer. I just thought this was like the dark age of uh the george lopez show where basically he is just like this crazy uncle mm-hmm. but yeah, and then jay's gonna also mentioned uh i guess uh, this was like a like a threads thread i guess uh answering for questions on threads but um basically every every nothing is nothing is canon until superman legacy and creature commandos comes out and then, and then everything after those two projects is canon to the universe. So like everything right now is not, isn't canon. And, and, and then it, if it's coming out post Superman legacy or creature commandos, it is, it is canon. Now I'm wondering, are they going to explain the, the like, non-connection to the prior universe through uh, a flashpoint that ha- somehow happens in the Superman movie or the Creature Commandos where it's like, hey, like, you know, I want some sort of nod to acknowledge that there was a canonical difference of things now. Because mm-hmm. you just can't drop us in a Superman movie and he's all like, boy, how do I want, like, one day I'll meet that Batman guy. And you're like, what? <laughs> Like, I think I think it's just it's probably just gonna be like, like New Fifty Two style, which is like, bam! It's like it's rebooted now. 
At least New 52 had a intro. Kind of ex- ex- like an explanation for what yeah. happened. And that's fine if you wanted to seek it out, but at least recognize it. And you had the perfect thing if you could, just Flashpoint it. Mm-hmm. Just say Flashpoint happened, some residual. Even, you don't even have to show Barry doing it. You can just have a quick thing where it alludes that this was the Henry Cavill Superman, but then when he, he turns around, he becomes the new guy. Because they did that in Shazam. Like, Henry Cavill's not even in the first Shazam movie. It's just, like, some dude wearing his suit. Just do that. You see the suit, and it morphs into the new suit. Boom. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know, I- I'm fine with that. I'm fine with, like, a blue beam of light shoots in the air, fucking clouds that go everywhere, and then it stops, and then somehow Superman's costume is a different hue and everything, and you're like, whoa, who is that? And you know, oh, it's Superman, but why is he different? Anyway, doesn't matter. Bring back, bring back the, uh, the, the the time balls, and just, like, we'll fly to a new time ball. Like, we'll, like, we should, like, we, like at the beginning of the Superman legacy, we should, like, fly out of, like, the DCEU ball, and just fly to another ball, and, like, we're now we're in this we're in this ball now. Yeah, actually that's not bad. We're in this dumb like purple ball that um <laughs> has this going on inside of it. Mm-hmm. And some of the characters are the same, but they're now they're slightly different because it's the we're in purple ball universe. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Comic fans are okay with that for ex- for an explanation of why are things rebooted or even different. I don't know. I don't know if they Maybe. even have a Manifesto Menif- character in the <laughs> DCU. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know there's Elseworlds tales, but that's usually prefaced already. Well, or that's, it's that's, like that's, uh, that's going to be like um, like Joker Two is going to be an Elseworlds movie in this new kind of canon universe. Right, right. Which I'm fine with. Like, or it's Earth Two. Mm-hmm. There are multi universes in the DCU that isn't really talked about because they typically just keep the Silver Age and the Golden Age and then even the Modern Age in different categories. So they never bleed over until, I don't know, Kingdom Come or something kind of like weird where Dr. Manhattan shows up. But I'm fine with that. Like, hey, I'm fine with the idea that these movies are in its own universe. Unfortunately, the Snack Schneiderverse, like, nothing exciting happens. After the first two movies, because everything else is very low stakes, I guess. Mm-hmm. Who, maybe maybe Aquaman. Maybe, maybe we'll get the answer in Aquaman. Maybe like post credits. Like, be some <sighs> weird post credit scene where it's just like, boom, the universe. Yeah. Like, yeah. Universe implodes. Yeah. Aquaman's at a flashpoint. Yeah, Aquaman creates flashpoint. Yeah. Aquaman makes like a water bubble Aqua or he's point. aqua yeah an aqua sphere and then or or something so weird where he finds a kraken monster he finds Cthulhu and he wishes the world to reset mm-hmm. I don't know if I was James Gunn I would do that I would pay the extra two million to just CGI some sort of creature or some sort of bullshit explanation where I don't know, Henry Cavill just sort of is Superman one more time just to, like, wink at the camera and flies off. Yeah. Get Ben Affleck. He doesn't need to put on the full suit. Just wear the crowd, you know, and then just, like, get, or get out of a car. Something. Guy Gado could be a CGI monster like she was in the other one. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, we'll see. I think we're what's Superman Legacy is 2025, so we got a couple of years before we get all get all the answers. But we'll, we'll keep track of any other any news as it comes out. And then last bit of news this week is that a big uh, 80s show is finally coming to streaming for the first time ever, which is Moonlighting, the, S- the Civil Shepherd Bruce Willis classic. Uh, it's going to be on Hulu starting on October 10th. All 67 episodes. Of movie Lane will be on on Hulu. Uh, they've been working on getting them HD remastered, so they're gonna be like their HD up, like up-res, uh moonlighting. They've been going through and like re- redoing all the rights for the songs, so like most of the songs that are featured in the show are gonna be back. They got the uh, the theme song, like the Al- 
El Jaro's classic theme song is, gonna be, is, is still a part of it. But that, that, that was the big, that was the, it's been, Moment Millennium's been caught in like this crazy like legal thing where it was ABC Circle Films was the production company that owned it. But then that, that, got, that got lost in like the, you know, ABC Disney merger. And then it's like, do we, do we actually still own this or who owns the rights to the moon lighting? <laughs> and it's like. Let's just keep um, making episodes until someone gets sued, basically, is the attitude. Yeah, but the, the original creator, uh, Glenn, Glenn Glenn Karen, um, was basically, like, heading up the remastering and all the um, all the legal stuff. So, yeah, it, se- it seems like it seems like you're a fan of Moodling or if you've never seen it before, like, it's going to be pretty much the way it was or maybe better because now it's HD. <laughs> um and uh, yeah, you can check it out on Hulu. You can check out some, like one of the most well remembered and well loved Bruce Willis uh, roles of all time. Did you watch a lot of Moonlighting? I mean, I've heard of it. I listen. I, I like the theme song is incredible. Um, but I, I don't. I've never, I've never watched an episode. Maybe maybe I, maybe I will watch an episode or two when it gets Hulu. I think I watched one or two episodes as a kid. It's uh, it's a pretty good. I mean, when it was on TV, it looked fine to me. It didn't I mean, feel I was, like it was a TV show. I mean, I was three when it ended, so I didn't watch it when I was a kid. <laughs> so yeah, but it was on reruns before it just kind of went Maybe, off the yeah. air because mm-hmm. like it was hard to watch. Like it was hard to like. I don't think Nick and Knight even had it. No, I think probably because of all the legal stuff, and then also like, um, it had a ton. It used a ton of music. It used a ton of like pop songs. Like contemporary pop songs at the time, so that's like that's a whole like if you're if you're putting it somewhere else you gotta like you gotta license all that music. That's what that's why a lot of like there's a, a, a lot of shows that are still not streaming or not available because it's the, the music rights or they just like or like that's why like a lot of shows like strip out the music completely and they just have like so if, if a show had like licensed music when it was airing now it has like just generic music because they couldn't like they couldn't like pay for the rights to the music again i know the biggest example was the wonder years where they basically yes. could not maintain the beatles rights yeah mm-hmm. that was stripped bef- like for the dvd so not even for streaming But yeah, it was a it was it was it was a huge huge hit uh, back in like I think especially in like the uh, it's like nineteen eighty five nineteen eighty six season that was like it was like top twenty for like the rest of the rest of the show. But then, apparently they but then ABC moved it to like face off against Murder Shiro and then Murder Shiro just destroyed it <laughs> like the final season. So then that's like and like so like the fifth season was like up against Murder Shiro got destroyed and then it's like well. Would like done. Well, I think the stale formula was the won't will she will he won't she thing, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I can see Marisha wrote with doesn't have that subplot of her romance life, so people were just genuinely interested in murder cases that it didn't involve a couple that didn't. I don't think it, 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 yeah bickered a lot. Yeah, especially if their chemistry and their their backgrounds is just very like explained by second season. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure that they ended up together or not. I mean, I, I'm I, I, I'm sure they probably had to at some point, or like that, like in the final season maybe or something. That maybe they're like, maybe that's what maybe that's what kill it too is like. Oh, now they're together. I don't care. <laughs> like, I get it. I think was um like like Bruce Willis was already, he's already working at the detective like because like because Sybil Shepard's a model and she ends up running or like owning somehow a detective agency and then I think Bruce Willis is just like was working there and now he's like oh now you're my boss or you're like we're partners now because like I was like partners with like the person who like used to own half the agency before you bought it so now we're now I got to deal with you <laughs> like. 
Yeah, I don't know what the plot was. I just remember they, it was. Yeah, because because they were like, yeah, they, they would every 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 episode was like they were like solving a mystery or something. It was like some sort of they got hired to do like to like you know investigate something. But yeah, if you want if you want to check it out, uh, October tenth, the entire show will be up uh, on Hulu, so you can check it out then. And that's gonna do it for news this week. So I jump into show and tell. And Chris, what are you watching over the last week or so here? So I did a double thing where I watched two movies that happen to be very similar. Okay. Uh, first, I watched The Little Mermaid. The new the, one. The Disney, yeah, the Disney okay. live action one. Mm-hmm. Just to check it out and see the difference. Um, I think too much time has passed where I kind of forgot some of the small details about The Little Mermaid. And when I watched this, it was even weirder because, you know, when you like rediscover plot threads to movies and it's just like very bizarre when you see it. So I didn't know that Ariel's singing voice is a siren thing where you can't tell in the original cartoon if Prince Eric is actually in love with Ariel or it's the like the spell she casts. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that being a focus point of the original Disney movie? I don't think so. I feel like I feel like she just like like says something from the shipwreck and then like tr- like drops off on the beach and then leaves. Well, she sings to him. Well, because she sings regardless, right? Yeah. And then in this one, they really focus in. Like that's what I'm saying. I I didn't notice it in the original, so like that's why I didn't mind watching this because because now, but I'm not, now that I watched it, there is a point where mermaids sing to lure sailors to their death, and that's the 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 classic lore. This one, not so much, but the idea is that the siren song is a power. And it mm-hmm. can influence people and, for some reason, heal people. But that's, that's like, an extra thing. Okay. So that's why when Ariel loses her voice, the guy's sort of in love with the sound of her voice more than what he saw. Because this version, she, she just, he didn't see her. He just heard her. Like, she saves him from a shipwreck. But uh, Ariel is like seen to be like a blur so you he couldn't prince eric couldn't tell what he saw but he's sort of infatuated and the movie does a good job of at least correcting this plot hole if the original one didn't address it which i don't know if it did was that ariel's singing voice is like a you know a very important thing in the in the sense that she couldn't talk but this one is like hey he still might be cursed and possessed and he's acting strange and like love struck, but you can't tell if that's actually love or Ariel just sort of like accidentally cursing this guy. So the movie has that plot point, which I'm surprised not a lot of people brought up or the trailer could have brought that up, you know, like that. At least that's different. Uh, then there are pretty good like CGI sequences underwater. Everything actually looks pretty good. I mean, not amazing. Somehow they did they did they kind of couldn't figure out the Aquaman hair. Mm-hmm. It somehow looks worse than Aquaman. <laughs> and I heard uh, I heard it's also like they're trying to make it like realistic, like 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 lighting and stuff. So it's but so it's like it's like way murkier and darker than like the original movie. Yes, like I say, like it's not, like like it's not as colorful and like you know. No, it's, it's not. Just like, right. They they should have just went for cartoony visuals, like yeah, not super realistic, but certain things had could just look better by being bright and cartoony. And you're right that what, here's the it's jarring. So when they see the open water, when really no humans there, it looks nice, like it's very bright and very like colorful. Then you throw in a human and something goes wrong. Something with the coloring and the lighting, you're right. Like it just to like make sense. Even though the human is nowhere near like a cave, somehow when they're just out in the open, your brain just senses something's not right. So 
that's why a good amount is taken like anytime they're underwater they are like in a some sort of throne room or or ariel's grotto like it, then it looks okay then you get used to it however <laughs> whenever they're like I, I i i mean you probably know the story but like when javier bardem's head comes out of the water and he still has like the king trident hair that is now like sloppy wet <laughs> it looks bizarre like it looks like they bought a spirit of halloween uh wig and then like drenched it and then slapped it onto him it just looks weird so yeah like because it just looks like you drowned santa claus <laughs> they just come out of the water and you're like oh what is this they, again, they don't address the obvious where why does King Trident have so many like multicultural daughters and where the hell is Ariel's mother? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's is Ariel's mother a mermaid? They never mention how he how they do any of this. Plus, they do this thing where Ariel, the skin of the mermaids makes their top. For some reason, men don't have like the scaly like. I don't know. Ariel's older sisters. They they made a good point by showing Lisa Ariel is still a young mermaid. And then her sisters are basically mature like 20 year olds. Mm -hmm. And they're fully developed with like powers, I guess. And then their attire looks like they're speed skaters. Like they look like something from like a low budget family friendly superhero movie. You know, they're wearing like very skin tight speedo outfits. Like, or like not Speedo, but like, like like Aquaman. Aquaman, yeah. It, it's just like what? Like, do they fight crime? What's going on in this like <laughs> console? And they don't focus on it. Apparently, though, they can swim from different parts of the sea. So when they come together for this coronation to crown Ariel, the next like, I don't know. It's weird. I don't even know how to explain that. They, he, she, they, she's not getting land. She doesn't get territory. It's just sort of like, oh, you're. 16? Like, your, they really your, try not to say how old. It's your Ocean Kitsunera? Yeah, they're just like, hey, it's your birthday, we think. I don't know. Um, <laughs> then, the other disturbing thing is, uh, Ariel doesn't, is not allowed to break the surface of the water. This movie focuses on her never going to, like, popping her head outside of the water. Which, super wrong from the original, because she's observing and then looking at people. In this version, she's forbidden. I mean, her father has forbid her to ever, like, stick her head out of the water. So the first time she does it is to save Prince Eric, which is a total accident, because basically, uh, Prince Eric's ship is, just crashes, and then because it crashes all this like fo- all this like flames and stuff go off and it attracts him it attracts her to like go to the surface and like no one stops her it's sort of just like sebastian sort of sees her but there's no one protecting because it's a big ocean it's the ocean mm-hmm. so she breaks the surface and that's when she actually gets to look at the world but but like you know it, it, it's such a like bizarre obsession she has with the human world but she's never like seen it she's just seen their junk at least in the other versions she's able to pop her head out and like look at people and see humans and all that this one they make it seem like ariel is a complete like she's not even allowed to go up like swim up Mm -hmm. so she does feel like a prisoner like they they focus on that but it makes it like insane of a of a thing at least in the original, she wanted to walk on land and, and touch fire and other weird stuff. But this one, they really made it seem like Ariel is... There, there's something really bad with mermaids. But, okay. So when I think that's like a plot hole, for some weird reason, the kingdom that Eric comes from is super anti-mermaid. They're just like, no, mermaids are real. People say they're not, but we know... And then the, the queen of that kingdom is hates the sea because the king the the sea the the fa- the king died in a boating accident so she blames mermaids. Mm-hmm. So that's like okay they kind of up the ante you know they that part is okay so 
But it makes it seem like they are nuts for a kingdom, and it's so much of a nuts kingdom that they they don't want to trade with anyone outside of their island. So you have like a parent, you have two paranoid kingdoms basically, mm-hmm. which I did not get that vibe from the original. I was like, oh, okay, they're going with this angle. But uh, I gotta say, Melissa McCarthy do, does a really good job as Ursula. That's what I heard. Yeah, she is amazing. Like, I I thought it'd be like the typical Miss Miss Lil McCarthy stuff, like the goofiness, but she she's great. I I am like all about that. Like even from the photos and the announcement, I was like, oh okay, that's fine. And then she does a good job. Her okay, but they do a thing which I still don't understand, where. In the original, Ursula is a sea witch that uses her magic to, like, trick Ariel and also punish or, or, like, take King Trident's soul because, like, he offered his in exchange for Ariel's life, right? Mm -hmm. In this one, she, like, it's not even, like, she sort of commands her eels to kill him. Her eels aren't magic eels. Her eels don't, I mean, they seem sinister, but that could just be, like, you know, evil. But they literally just, like, tase him. And I thought, oh, okay, maybe, like, they're going to take him away or, like, something. He's going to get weaker. No, it is shocking, Zach. It is, uh, like, I was like, what, what, what's happening in this movie? It gets like a horror film for this one sequence where he starts disintegrating and his like corpse turns into like a skeleton into like this black abyss. And I was like, wait, what's happening (laughs) from this? Like from this eel shock, the eel shocks don't seem like they're doing some crazy super like power move. It just seems like they, they wrap around his arms and they like shock him. But then he just starts like, he starts yeah. looking like he got snapped, you know, like maybe, in maybe a way more. Hmm? Maybe they're imbued with like evil Ursula magic or something. I have no idea, but the fact that you have eels that could just do that to the king trident, like what? So, uh oh, before I I forget, yeah, uh, Scully looks goddamn bizarre. Aquafina's fine in the role, but. Oh, Scully, Scuttle. Scuttle. Scuttle, yeah. So, remember I mentioned Scuttle is a, like, you know, so Ariel has never broken the, sur- or, like, the water tension. Like, she never just floated up, right? So, Scuttle has to swim underwater and is there for, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. Just talking and, I'm like, this, you want to be realistic? You have a seagull that is just underwater for a very long time so well, well i think i think the bird the bird that she's based on is can dive but only they yeah only they stay underwater for like extended periods of time yeah that's all like ah, i get it they're trying to really just tie it in in order to make ariel seem like she's truly trapped in this vast land i get the symbolism but it just doesn't work for me as a like Oh, I also, I also, I also, I, I've, I've heard a little bit of it, but I've heard, like, that song, that, the new song, like, the Scuttlebutt seems the scuttlebutt, insane. Oh. <laughs> it, it comes out, okay, it hits you weird because you, it starts with just, like, slowly these words rhyme, but then it picks up momentum, and it just goes off the rails, and it has nothing to do with, um, what they're talking about. It's just like you could have just said the sentence, but the fact that it's like, hey, this is a fun song, and it just keeps on going. I'm like, wow. Okay, they okay, this is different too. So, and this gets weird now. I, and then after that, we'll I'll stop talking about Lower Mermaid. But now I mentioned that uh, Ariel, she lost her voice. And she can't, like, communicate with Prince Eric. And you can't tell if Prince Eric's in love with her or the spell, right? So, when they sing Kiss the Girl, they 
point, Sebastian points out that Ursula put something in the curse that anytime she remembers about the purpose of her being there, mm-hmm. like the the purpose of because the agreement is that Ariel has to convince Prince Eric to give her true love's kiss. It's like a big gamble she's willing to do. Like it, and Ursula kind of explains that where it's like either you take this deal of like give me your soul and try to do this like really hard task or stay stay as a prisoner in King Trident's like weird grip. And she takes the deal. I understand that. But the thing that she adds to the curse is that, yeah, if she forget, she can't remember the the true purpose besides you're kind of have a crush on Prince Eric. It, like there's no motivation for her to get out of, of the curse. So it's funny because whenever whenever the other characters mentioned to her about like fo- like focus on your task, stop sticking around. You only have like two days to do this. She goes to sleep or she like like wanders off. So the movie sort of like explains that from the first movie, you know, like the the original. Because the original, she is no urgency besides like being cute and sort of like eating. In this movie, they it's like they purposely do like, hey, like I gotta remind you, you have a task to do, and then she like takes a nap and she's like, oh, oh, okay. And then like they do it again, and then she does something different, and then she's like, oh, oh, I think she like Ursula tricked us. I we're, we need to like figure out a solution. So when they do kiss the girl, uh, it it's tor- it's for Prince Eric to like subtly do right, mm-hmm. but he doesn't understand animal life. I think the original it was just like ambience so that he they feel motivated. Both of them feel mo- put set the mood for the kiss, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in this one, this version, Sebastian is is subliminally messaging uh, Prince Eric to do this. And he sort of understands, which I don't get how, but they sort of like, oh no, like even the humans can't understand us. Like the, the sounds of this swamp will like get them in the mood. So we, and like the thing is they, they had to do it in a way where if they mentioned to Prince Eric to kiss her, she will fall asleep or something like she will get like distracted so like that's the that's the setup of kiss the girl which i'm like it it reframes the first movie like the original like in a different way so i was like i i so i'm like is that what happened in the original yeah so there there is like an interesting story somewhere in this movie it's just like you have to work for it and there's a lot of like obvious things where it could be solved by just not having insane parents on either end. But at least they state that. Like the the movie is coherent. Is it something I could watch again? Eh, probably not. But then again, I'm not a big fan of the original cuz like it's got story flaws and like I think in the original, like the the original Little Mermaid, um true love's not a thing. It ends with, like, Prince Eric uh, actually being enticed by the song. And then, like, he ends up, uh, like, just going, like, oh, shit, like, I don't love you. Like, I just met you. To to Ariel. And then she dies. Mm -hmm. And then it's, like, it could have been true love, but because how they met, it wasn't, like, good. And this version, it's they bond because she can't talk and he can't like do anything. They bond because of the love of having a lot of stuff. I'm I'm like not even kidding. It's like she has so much garbage in her grotto. He also has like a library, but it's full of just trinkets. Yep. And then she basically falls in love with the idea because because she can't be told to fall in love with him. She can't remember to kiss him. She sort of sees all this garbage, and she's just like, "You're like, like, I want to be with you, so we, I can have your stuff." That's the message I got out of it, which I'm pretty sure wasn't the intended message. But like I said, Little Mermaid was weird like that. Uh, 
What else? Oh, and then to top it off, I watched the new Barbie movie. Okay. Uh, I thought it was good. It it's a little strange how similar this movie is to the is to the Matrix. <laughs> it's got like a very close message of choosing your destiny, breaking like, free of the norm. Like like Barbie Land is the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, and it's like she chooses to like take the red pill and be awoken. But the idea is that um, if she doesn't, so the, so Barbie's very like I'm not sure of the trail. Like, thank God, I don't know. I kind of appreciate the trailer not explaining the movie, and mm-hmm. I don't want to ruin the movie too much because I think it's worth seeing, Zach. If you can see it soon, we'll talk deeper about it. Yeah, I'm gonna, but, I'm, I'm, when it hits max, I'll, I'll probably check it out. Yeah, so there's a lot of strange... Like, in Barbie World, it can be silly and nonsensical, and I don't mind it. It does remind me of, like, the Lego movie, where it's, like, meta, right? Mm-hmm. However, when they come to the real world, they do exp- the, the, they do the good job of sort of, like, if there's plot holes, they explain it. There's for- fourth wall breaking things, and there's also, like, winks at its own silliness of the movie. So, like, it's, like, a good movie for that. It also reminds me of, like, the Brady Bunch, where the Brady Bunch movies, the, like, modern ones, where they're sort of stuck in the 60s, but everyone else has moved on. It's sort of like that, but now imagine, like, Mattel, the company, is this thing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not to spoil so much, but Mattel is 100% aware of the Barbie portal that they they accidentally like connect it from the t- the toys so they sort of explain that mattel's like barbie has created a, a a realm where the toy line gave birth to this existence of barbie people and every barbie person in that world is a toy that was like is is played with, was played with, like they are spirits connected to their physical being somewhere at one point or another. That, they don't get too deep on it, but the movie it actually does say, like, hey, don't think too hard about it. It's just like these are spiritual representations mm-hmm. of of other toys. So I'm like, of physical toys. So I'm like, oh, okay. And whenever they try to get too meta and deep, they go, ah, don't think about it. Like one character will say something like that. However, it's funny because there's an agreement between Mattel and the FBI to handle Barbie situations. So I'm not going to spoil that, but it's so quick and it's just for you to like enjoy the movie. Uh, However, there's a degree of just weirdness within Mattel as a company that I it's very cartoony, which I feel like is not good when almost everyone in the whole real world part is serious or like normal. And then Mattel itself is run by just like Looney Tune characters. So that's only my only negative. It's not even Barbie. It's not even the message. I don't mind the message. The everything else was great. And I was like, wait, this is just like the matrix with extra steps. Mm-hmm. Though there isn't like a, um, there isn't exactly a Agent Smith character, but I'm not going to spoil that because when this dark twist happens, it's funny. I'm not sure if, he's, if you've been keeping up with the memes and everything, but it, it it gets very preachy. I get it. And it's just to be, highlight the the hyper stupidity of something. I, I definitely recommend it, though. Like it, it I get the I get the phenomenon. I also understand the memes now. I also totally get that. When you watch Barbara Hammer, this was the more sadder ver- movie. <laughs> like it, it just it, it means more. I don't know. Bar- I mean, Oppenheimer is a very like historical thing, and it's dramatic, and it's cinematic like visuals. Even though I think you don't see the bomb, you you see a test of it, and then that's it. Like that's the big climax of Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. But in this, this is just like hits you on so many like, I don't know, like family, emotional death, and pointing out like mortality. 
it's that's what I'm saying. Like it's more grounded in trying to like speak to people, which I understand. So having these two, if you've seen Baba Hammer and, and AMC during that time of that like two two movies for one, where it's like six hours of movies. I don't know. You might be an emotional wreck after it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the what I saw. Uh, my analysis of Little Mermaid, man. Like saw that, I was just like, whoa, this is what the controversy was. And I watched it. I was like, <laughs> I get it, but I'm more more about the plot than the actual like whatever's happening in the background or like graphics wise. <laughs> but. Well, I, th- I think the Little Mermaid is like more, as far as like the live action remakes go, I think that was more toward like the upper, like people like enjoyed that one more than like some of the other ones. Like, you know, that, I still, uh, haven't, that, I still uh, haven't seen the Lion King one. Well, the Lion King I mean, is is just weird because it's it's so pointless because there's literally no, there's almost nothing new in it. It's just literally just the, it's just the animated movie, but now it's now the animals are like photorealistic. Mm-hmm. With like worse voice acting, so it's like, what what was the point of this? But then it made a billion dollars. So I guess the point was people love the Lion King, will watch anything Lion King. And then I yeah. didn't see Dumbo, which I heard like I, I haven't seen Dumbo. Like a, no. I feel like I need to just for the fact that it has a Tim Burton twist of the lighting, and then it has way more plot for a character that wasn't even in yeah, the original. Yeah, because well, the original Dumbo is like barely. An hour? I, th- I don't think it's actually like a full length movie. I think it's like it's like sixty minutes. Forty five minutes. Yeah. So they had like yeah they had, they had like a whole another like hour of plot onto it. Yeah, I, I just I knew it came out like a weird time, but I imagine it's still. I'm probably gonna give it a shot one day. And then Pinocchio. I forgot holy that smoke, was a thing. holy smokio Pinocchio. <laughs> I forgot that movie came out. I just I, there's I've seen those all the clips that like. We're like being like sent around of like just like how horrible it looks and it's like wow yeah this is this i'm never watching this <laughs> just tom hanks tom hanks just going insane and like singing that new the new song quote unquote song we're just like pinocchio pinocchio holy smoke yo <laughs> like what is this i think that was a disney plus exclusive yeah that was like disney plus day last last year i think I can't believe it's been a year since I came from. So, 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 I think, like, um, like, I trailers, like, screen junkies, said, but they were like, somehow it was worse than the Polly Shore Pinocchio movie. <laughs> Which, what, one of three Pinocchio movies last year. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I heard, uh, that Guillermo del Toro one was the super sad one. Yeah. But that one got all the critical acclaim, and apparently it's like gorgeous and incredible and <laughs> everything you expect from Guillermo del Toro. So, no, I'm just not emotionally ready to watch that one. Mm-hmm. I heard it hurts. It like it's one of those like sweet bitter pains to watch, just because. Yeah, it's 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 got like it's all about like it's like an allegory for fascism. I think it's it's stuff because it's all about like it's like set like in World War Two or World War One. I, I think. It was World War One. Yeah. Anyway, uh, as far as what I've been watching, um, I saw the first episode of The Continental, which debuted last Friday. And if you're hearing this, episode two is up. Uh, it's going to be a three episode, although episode is like it's each episode is like 90 minutes. So it's basically like three three movies uh, for like a limited series. But yeah, obviously, this is the uh, the John Wick prequel series. It's set in the 70s. Um, it's showing how Winston became the head of the, the continental new york but in in the 70s he was just a like kind of con artist like he kept, he's, he's kind of introduced like with this doing this like scam in london trying to like get like bill, millions of dollars from this like you know wealthy guy and he has he has this whole like real estate deal about like we're gonna build parking lots in uh in because like there's there's something with like uh, there's like strikes and stuff going on in like the UK in the, in the 70s, so it's it's kind of like it's like, it like oh we could strike and like get like this land for super cheap, and then we could build like parking lots because they're they're gonna build a bunch of skyscrapers, but they need places to park. But then the whole thing is like, it's just like this like scam because he's like sleeping with the guy's wife, and so the wife is in on it, and they're they're just like trying to like trying to get money like like scamming money from the husband. That's what the movie's about. 
this is this just like like what's this like intro? That's like like he's like oh he's like this like oh okay he's like, this, this young you know womanizing con artist who's like has nothing to do with the continental like he's like in London he's super far away from New York, but then he gets dragged back because his brother Frankie, who was uh, involved with the continental he was like kind of working under uh, the current in the seventies owner like proprietor of the continental. Cormac, who's played by Mel Gibson. And then Frankie steals something from the Continental, like the vault of the Continental. And then, uh, so then Cormac sends like a bunch of the Continental guys to Winston, like basically drag him back from London to New York. And they say like, you got to find your brother and and get that thing back or we're going to kill you both. I, and so that, I, I thought it was just like a deal gone wrong. I, I didn't know like he stole something like a whole vault from the Continental. Well, he, he breaks into the vault and steals something, which I, like oh. I, mean, I, I, guess, I mean, I guess it's not like it's not like a spoiler or anything. It's like he steals a like it's it's a press for the coins. So it's like this like ancient press that they used to make like the actual you know like the, the coins that's like the currency of the Continental. Gotcha. So you know if you, if you have that, you can basically just make a bunch of like continental money or like like uh assassin world money and just like then you have you know you have like unlimited access to, if you if you still if you can get to like wherever you can like you know, like buy a ton of guns or buy whatever um so that's that's kind of like, that's what frankie steals and that's what the, the continental like is what wants back because that could like disrupt like the whole like economy of the assassin world makes sense um and yeah, so, so that's basically the first episode. Like, Winston is like is like forced back to New York, and he's and he's got to try to find his brother. And there's a whole bunch of other characters that like get dragged in. Uh, there's like other weird assassins. There's like this like brother brother sister assassin team that are like very bizarre and unusual. And uh, there's like there's a another like adjudicator. So you, we, you know we had like the, the adjudicator in uh, John Wick Chapter Three, but there's a there's another uh, adjudicator in this in uh, the seventies played by like Katie McGrath with Supergirl. And then she has like a giant hulking like Scottish guy in a kilt that's like beating like <laughs> beating someone for information while like while like 70s music plays. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of like uh so, uh, a lot of like the like John Wick flavor like going on is like like there's like colorful characters and uh you know like the, the, the in like the settings and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it definitely it it, it kind of it lacks kind of like it doesn't have, you know, the heart because like john's not involved so i mean because like you know from like pretty much the, like the, for, the first movie i'm like we're like fully on john's side and like john is like the heart of the, of the soul of like the entire franchise so if he's not here to like you know to, to like cheer on and like root for it's kind of like everyone's kind of just like an asshole like a despicable asshole i get it so it's, so it's, there's not like really like there's not like a sympathetic like person to like like root for like you know winston's a dick his brother's a dick like mel gibson's character is like a he's like it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because like cormac is like not what you would expect from like a continental like hot, hotel like runner like because he seems he's like he like, start, like i think the, like the backstory to give him was like he started out as like a loan shark and then but somehow ended up in like promoted to like the, the assassin like hotel owner but he still he still feels like a gangster like he still feels like a mafia like you know like like new york gangster guy but he's running this like elite hotel it's definitely, it's definitely not, not like definitely not like what we would see like from like, e. McShane uh later or like uh you know like hiroyuki sonata or something yeah 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 it, it, got, it seems it's, like it's got, the continental it's, standards are pretty low for that time yeah like cormac has a very much more like rough like like br- kind of brutal like <laughs> like I'm, I'm gonna send like goons after you like kind of thing and like break break your ankles or whatever break your wrists or whatever so it's it's fine i'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna keep like watching like the other two episodes because I, I, it's only three episodes um it de- it's definitely like it there's definitely something missing from the movies, though. Like it, it, it yeah, it's it's missing like that kind of like you know the Keanu ness of it. It's, it's, so it's, it's, it's did, very... did they explain why Winston is Winston Russian or Ukrainian, wherever John is? No. 
they, they, they like grew up in New York and then uh, they like at some point, like they both got, they both kind of like got put under like Cormac's wing because like something happened to their father and they, they kind of like just on the streets by themselves and then Cormac took them in. And like and when he was just like, when Cormac was just like a loan shark. But then at some point Winston kind of just left and was like, I'm going to go do my own thing. And then became like this, like, you know, successful con artist and like high, like London, like, I'm in like the upper, I'm in like high society in London kind of. And then Frankie went to like Vietnam and became like a special forces soldier. So he's the one, there's like a, there's a big opening action sequence and Frankie's the one is like doing like the John Wick, you know, crazy action stuff. And then apparently they can't explain it. Cause like, they're like, Oh, he, he a soldier in Vietnam and basically like, any weapon he picks up, he can like basically like use it to like the fullest potential. Like he's just like a, a natural like weapon basically. I get it. the brother, right? The brother. Yeah. I see. So he's sort so, of like a proto John Wick. Yeah, so dur- so during the heist, he's well, like there's like a bit a huge kind of John Wick style action sequence where he's like he's like trying to get out of the Continental and he's like fighting a bunch of guys up a stairwell, like running to like different areas of the Continental. So that's that's kind of like the big like oh this is still you know it's like this, this is still John Wick. We have this huge action sequence. So yeah, I mean it it's it's pretty good. Um, not not as good as any of the movies, but um, if you're a fan of John Wick and you want to see more of that world, it's 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 it's, it's uh, probably worth checking out a Peacock. If you have Peacock, I guess. <laughs> Do I don't I don't know if it's worth getting Peacock just for this, but if you have Peacock, check it out. I mean, it's not bad if you compare if you combine it with Twisted Metal and this for a quick no. month. I, th- I mean, I think I, I think I enjoyed Twisted Metal more, but. This yeah, this I mean, this this definitely looks way more high budget than Twisted Metal. Like you could definitely like they're definitely like really le- going into like the like the '70s New York aesthetic. Like it's like it, it's, like the setting and like the lighting and all that stuff. Like that's all way higher budget than than Twisted Metal was. <laughs> but yeah, I saw so I saw that, and then I also saw um the Hitcher. The uh 1980s classic with rucker hauer which was uh, I, th- I think i mentioned last week one of my final netflix movies that like physical netflix movies um but yeah really really interesting cool uh i mean i i i'm not like i guess it's it's a horror thriller because it, it has like horror elements but it's not I don't. I don't know if it would be like if you classify it as like a like a full on like horror movie. Mm, yeah, it, it's. It, it has, horror it has alley more, is d- weird, especially when you see the original. It's not as horror. It's just dramatic. No, I'm, 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 I'm the hitcher, Chris. I. Uh, oh, they, sorry. They, 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 yeah, Nightmare Alley is my official last DVD. Uh, the Game of Toro one. I, I didn't get you to see that when it was on Max or Hulu or anything. But yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that probably next week or in a future episode but yeah the second second to last movie i got was the hitcher um but it's horror because he's sort of like a he's like a yeah he's a serial serial killer murderer yeah that's it it, horror it's a horror thriller because it definitely has a lot of of thriller elements too like a more like you know um it's like a, a straight alone horror movie it's definitely more yeah like it's like it's you know it's got like elements of like duel or like um what's that uh like uh the Kurt Russell movie where like his his wife disappears. Uh no, isn't that oh yeah I, I forgot that trucker movie too. Break break breakdown. Because it's similar to Breakdown, because like it's it's a it's like a very similar of like very desolate like desert landscapes where it's just like oh you you end up in like, this gas station that's like abandoned <laughs> but it's like the only thing for like 50, like hundred miles. <laughs> but yeah, I mean R- Rucker Howard though, I mean is incredible in that movie. Just like like you ne- you never ha- you have no idea at any time like what he's gonna do. Like he could just. Mm-hmm. Like he, he like he's like he seems like he he's like helping at certain points, but then he's also like like just like fucking everything up for C. Thomas Howell at every point, and then um, and it's not clear like like he's it's like he wants C. Thomas Howell to kill him, but then he's also like doing stuff to like try to kill C. Thomas Howell. He, he like he has he has this very interesting um like philosophy or like goal of like like he wants 
he's like he's like looking for someone that can actually like like kill him, it, like it like stand up to him and kill him. But like he's no one can. Find, so, yeah, he's sort of like a Highlander. Yeah. Or that, or he just has. That's like it's just his like weird like you know like insanity of like I like I'm gonna find I'm gonna start, like, kill people until I find someone that will like stand finally like you know stop me and then that's like that's that's what I actually want. It's like someone that like just stop me from like killing them. Because like multiple like multiple times in the movie like he gives like Thomas how like a chance to like kill him and then like like he like Thomas how like like chickens out every single time and then Rucker I was just like pathetic <laughs> like. But then, but then he's but then he's also like doing this like psychological warfare out of like like framing him for murders and like getting arrested by the cops and then. But then, but then it becomes weird because like Rucker Howard like disappears for a while and then it becomes like that like Charlie Sheen movie The Chase where it's like what? really where like C. Thomas Howell and then like Jennifer like Jennifer Jason Lee joins him because like and like C. Thomas Howell ends up like at like a diner that Jennifer Jason Lee like works at she's like it's like a waitress, but then, she like joins like joins him in like. After, when he escapes from like the police, and then they're like on the run from the police for like a, like a like a little segment segment of the movie, but then Rucker Howard shows back up and is like shoot like, like stopping the police from like catching them. So he's he's like sort of helping them by like murdering the police. But then, wow. but it, it's all but it's mostly just because he like he wants them himself. And then, uh, and then, oh man, the like the, the crate, like the Jennifer Jason Lee, like uh, like death seat is like insane too. Where like Rucker Hauer, like ties her to a truck, and well, like ties her to the, the, a trailer, but then like it's it's the trailer's unhitched from the truck, so then he's driving the truck, and like it has like a rope tied to like like you know like, the hitch of the truck, so he's basically like, drawing and quartering her. Mm-hmm. And then that's also like another point where it's like, like where he's like like talking to like telling like C. Thomas Howell, like. Kill me, kill me, or I'll, I'll, or she's gonna get like ripped apart, and it, like, he still can't do it. I guess is it like a morality thing? Yeah, I don't know if he, maybe he, maybe he, I, it's because yeah, he's just like a very like en- like enigmatic, like you you don't really know like what Rucker yeah. Howard wants or like what he like what is the, like what he's trying to do. I, I, it's, it seems like maybe it's kind of like that Joker thing of like, oh, can I like. Maybe can I like like you know corrupt this person into like killing and then I'll the like that's my victory. Is like I made the, yeah I made them kill kill someone that, that, that this like normal person that's like now like a a crazy murderer. Right, right. I, I I hadn't seen this movie in a long time, and even then I caught it on TV, and all I know is that like there's that updated one, which I don't know is as slow as this. Well, I think the whole. 2007 one is yeah i i haven't seen the remake i haven't seen like the the, the sean bean <laughs> sean bean's the hitcher right we should watch that just see if it compares i that maybe, could be, like, maybe a play. That, i mean that November. Came, that, that, that came out in like the uh you know that early 2000s like we're gonna remake every single like slasher movie because mm-hmm. that, that, that was all horror was for like a couple of, like uh, like in the mid 2000s was like we're we're making like uh my bloody valentine and uh black christmas and all these all these movies and the the, the hitcher uh remake was also was also like a michael bay one so that was like in the same like st- you know production company as like memory elm street and friday her teeth remakes and and i think texas chainsaw they did texas chainsaw 2003 and amityville horror too But yeah, the original Hitcher, awesome. Uh, if you want to see like an, an incredible Rucker Howard performance, um, and then, then yeah, also just a like, really interesting kind of like yeah, th- horror thriller, psychological thriller, <laughs> mind ga- like this mind game between C. Thomas Howell and Rucker Howard. I'm not I'm not sure if it's stream. That, that's why I think that's why I got it from Netflix like physically because I don't think it's really streaming anywhere, or like or like like not a like popular streaming service. It's probably on like it's probably on like some like uh it's it's on Direct TV right now. So if you have Direct TV, you can watch Witcher or the uh, the Hitcher. Uh, but that's it or or Cinemax apparently. But if it in, if it ends up like somewhere else like you know Max or Prime Video or something, definitely check it out. And uh, that's gonna do it for me. So we can wrap things up. Definitely head over to sites. Uh, we actually have right now on the site we have our September counter, which is Saw Two. Uh, 
just, you know, just time for Saw X. We watched Saw 2. Uh, we had special guest Chris from Radio of Horror and the Goth Girl uh, Horror Podcast. Which you, you're, a, you're, you're a guest on two of those episodes, right, Chris? The, the Goth uh-huh. Girl Horror Podcast? Yep. But yeah, head over, grab that track, watch it along with us. It's on Prime. You can watch uh, Saw 2 on Prime Video, so you can stick it up and watch it there with us. And uh, all the other news and articles, uh, or uh, Gamebox 2.0 articles up, also up, so you can check out what games we played for September. Um, uh, and, you know, yeah, see what we checked out. And all of our other stuff is up there as well. And for Chris, I'm Zach, and we will see you next week. For more Everything Action, head to www.everythingaction.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, at EVAction, on Facebook by searching for Everything Action, and follow us on Instagram at everything.action. You can also subscribe and get more episodes on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify.